New, 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 new. All right, new products this week. We got them. What you got? Start off with some, oh, these are real exciting AA batteries. Well, Yay. you know, we need AA batteries. We had these in the Ada box kit um, because it has a, what's a robot and you would power it off with AA batteries. And we're like, you know what? We should actually have these in the shop. There's four AA batteries, a couple bucks. They're actually really good batteries. They're about like 3,500 3, milliamp hours, 3,000 milliamp hour. Um, they work really well. We use them in the robot. No complaints. Okay. So they're pretty good. Um, right. You get the same quality as you would from the drugstore, but like, you know, a third the price. Okay. Um, next up, this goes hand in hand with an article that we did and also some of our efforts here at Adafruit. So we have a privacy badger patch. So um, it's a neat way to tell how sites are uh, watching what you're doing online. Mm -hmm. And not all sites respect um, do not track. Adafruit does. And we made a specific point. We have that on our private privacy policy. And we also did a specific article about that. So um, it's one of those things where if you maybe teach someone how to uh, protect themselves online, and you install tools like Privacy Badger, you could, um, you know, use a, uh, oh. which which one? We got multiple overheads. I know, so many overheads. We got this one. So this is the, um, the other overhead. This one. We got this one. This one is really nice. Yeah. So this is that. good for flat things. Uh, yeah. So this is the Privacy Badger. So it's a nice embroidered badge, and it's got um, a nice outline as well. And then it's iron-on, uh, or you can sew it on, whichever you want. But it's like a really cute little badger. Yeah. The software's free if you want to uh, show and, your pride. You know, if you're, if you're a seasoned internet Linuxy privacy person, you're like, ah, eh, get off my lawn, kids. This isn't for you. Um, although it is a nice badge, it is for you know encouraging people, especially young people, to figure out what their rights are online, how they can protect their identities online, how they can understand ads and cookies and tracking, tracking and all what that. What does that mean? And if we just constantly assume that it's all okay and we never look into it, we don't learn how to use these tools. Um, it'll probably not be such an exciting internet. So, Stuff anyways. happens on your computer. You shouldn't you know what it is? Yeah, so, you know, a word of We kid. love them, and then, yeah. Yeah, I mm -hmm. like to imagine a future where the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and all these scouting organizations are teaching modern skills totally like internet you. privacy. Internet yeah. privacy is yeah. a skill, is an important skill. Yeah, okay. Uh, next up on the list today, I, today is a Total Inventors Manual. This is from our friend, Sean Michael Oregon, and um, he, I worked with him at Make. And then he went on to do a bunch of other stuff. And there was a series of interviews. Um, you're in there. Um, yeah. And uh, it's for, I'd say, the maker out there who th who's thinking of going to manufacturing. The maker to be. Or, yeah, thinking going to, like, maker to market. Yeah. So. Um, I can flip through some of the pages. Yeah, I want you to flip through some It's of the a pages. really beautiful book. It's got this really lovely um, silvery front. And it's got um, color pages. And, and it kind of covers everything, but it's, like, fun to read. Like, it's not, like, you know, there's books that cover this stuff, but, um, you know, they have, like, techniques, like, for example, you know, using cardboard uh, and, like, vinyl cutters to um, prototype instead of, like, you know, getting 3D printing or, like, all these different skills and materials you can use. And, and it's kind of, like, fun, and also, you know, there's these um, little interviews so the inventor of the digital camera, and you know, like he has his prototype, and you can tell, like, this is like the first digital camera, and then, um, you know, assembly and manufacturing. So it's it's all the stuff that um, you know you don't you would normally learn just by doing. So like, you know, how do you do um, a spatula made out of uh, uh, silicone? Well, you have a fiberglass core, and then um, the outside is silicone. So that's how they, I guess, they got it working, or how to how to solder and how to do electronics. It's a little bit of everything, just kind of for the inventor to be. Yeah. And um, Sean McRagan is great. Uh, he's like so smart, you know, and he's uh, blogged for Make for like 10 years or something. Yeah. So he really knows this stuff. And I'm in here somewhere. Yeah. And you, had a, you had an interview. I don't know okay. where I am. But uh, yeah, like, you know, Kickstarters and suggestions. And, and it's bite sized, but it covers a lot. Yep. So really smart guy. So and we, we from uh, Popular Science. I was a senior editor at Popular Science in my, my former life. Okay. What a lovely book. Yep. All right. Next up, Ultimaker. We got a new version. Yeah, this is Ultimaker 3. This one has a dual extruder, which is kind of neat. Um, a couple upgrades. Check the product page for the yep. details. Um, but the cool thing is you can use water-soluble um, material now. And, and so you can uh, create things that normally would have support material you have to break away but in this case you can make it dissolve yeah. away through water or, or other um, solvent soluble yeah. um, 
Uh, we don't carry many 3D printers. We've whittled yeah. it down to just a couple that we think yeah. are really good. Um, a long time ago, we had MakerBots. The quality and, and the supply of MakerBots changed dramatically. At the time, it was when we first yeah. started, it was actually the best. So one market. of the things that we've always decided is we're not stuck with any specific 3D printer company. So if it's in the Adafruit store, at the time right now, it's the best set that's out there. Yeah. So right now, um, for this type of printing, we like the Ultimaker. They're really good. And um, we'll see what happens. Um, 3D printing landscape's kind of weird. If you asked me four or five years ago, would Ultimaker be one of the leading ones? At the time, MakerBot was kind of the only game in town for the, the maker out there, the, pro, the prosumer. Yeah. And uh, just recently, last week, um, the latest CEO at MakerBot is out, uh, Jonathan. New one's in, and at Stratasys, they have a new CFO. So lots of shakeups in that, that industry. I, know, I covered it for a long time on maker business and all that. And uh, anyways, it went um, three different CEOs, and they're still struggling to uh, get their footing back in the 3D printer market and uh, moved manufacturing um, overseas. So we'll see how MakerBot does long term. Ultimaker is currently the one that we really like. We also like Lulzbot. Um, the the Lulzbot's really good. Yeah. Um, Tazbot, which I think is the same thing, is good. Um, the simple, some of the simple yeah. metals are good. And you people are playing around with getting yeah. um, low cost ones and then upgrading the electronics. So it's still, you know, you know, there's like the new Prusa. There's, there's still um, printers, but like I think, I think we're finally through the like everyone's coming out with a three hundred dollar printer on Kickstarter phase. I think like I think that's over. I think that's over. Yeah. I think we've kind of settled and. Um, to design a new printer from scratch now, it, it would take so long for you to catch up. Yeah. That, uh, so there's also a lot of service bureaus that you can use to, you know, you send your files and they print them for you. So anyways, form labs, we don't carry the form labs because they won't sell to us. And then yeah. the Autodesk one's good. So there's a couple of different options right now. Okay. But this one's a good, for dual extrusion, so, this is great. Yeah. I feel like every year you should look at this time at Ask an Engineer the years before because we kind of, we're just like, we had... We asked no one Pedro, which is the best one? We're just going with the tide <laughs> We're here. We're like, which is the best one that you use all the time that you really yeah. like? So. And by the way, sometimes, like, you know, the company's really good, but one of their printers just won't be good. We'll skip it because yeah. it just didn't work out as well. Uh -huh. Okay. Next up, headers. We have headers. Stack and headers. Stack and headers. We have now generic stacking headers. So stacking headers, you know and love them because um, they let you stack. And um, so we also, I have a little demo I'll show. You have a demo? Yeah, I can okay. show that now if you want. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, I'm just showing it with the feather just because it's like what I had on my desk. So, you know, normally you have like a, a board and it might plug into another board. And in this case, I soldered this one with stacking headers. And this is another one that I had with the same board, basically, with stacking headers. And, you know, what's nice about stacking headers is it means you can plug multiple boards into each other and they stack, like literally mechanically, they stack on top of each other. And as long as you get the electrical pins to, to you know, coincide, uh, you can basically stack forever. So these are the uh, stacking headers. They're basically the best of both worlds. You get your long pin, like plug male headers, and you get your socket uh, female headers. But this time you get them in one. You have to solder them in, um, but uh, they do work well. And uh, just be a little bit careful. These are thin. They do bend a little easily, but this is kind of the, the deal. Like, they, they only come this thin because if they were any thicker, it would be really hard to remove them because um, they, uh, they stick so well inside of the, the sockets. And, but, you know, we have uh, Arduino pack, and we have, like, a feather header pack, so you get one of these. But what if you have a, your own board? Well, now we have a generic 36-pin stacking header. And um, so you can use this with any board. And actually, I'll... Just give me one moment. Address. And there she goes. I'll be back. The last time I saw her. No, 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 no. I'm coming back. I'm back. That's what they call. I just realized I should probably show how to cut these. Gotta get a new host. Hey, I'm back. Oh. Um, so yeah, I'm back with my tools. So for example, you know, you you get it in 36 pins, but let's say you need a shorter um, number of pins. Maybe you're like, okay, I need a, a five pin connector. You count one, two, three, four, five, and then after the pin, you pull it out like that. Yeah. Like a tooth. You just yank it out with your, your uh, pliers, and then you can go in with your diagonal cutters, and then you cut it, and it cuts very easily. And then that's it. So now it's, I mean, it's not breakaway. Pull and snip. Okay. Pull and snip. But it's, it basically yeah. now you've got, you know, your custom length, and so you can, you know, you can clean this up if you want, you know, just get rid of the, 
the schmutz left over. Okay. And then you can keep cutting it down to make any size stacking headers you like. So we can just carry one by 36 because it's long enough. Chances are there's nothing that you need that's longer. It's long enough for like a you know breadboard and stuff. And um, make your own stacking headers. You get a set of five. Very handy for when you're you want to stack things. Prototyping. Okay. Because these are long lead time items, so you, it's long a way around it. lead time items. Yeah, because they take six to eight weeks to get, so this is a way a way to get them faster. Okay. Okay. All right, next up. I guess this is kind of the star of the show besides yeah. you tonight. This is a little RTC. Pi RTC. Real-time clock for Raspberry Pi. It's small, but it's lovely. I remember when you were working on this on an episode of Desk of Lady Ada. Like three days ago. I was just, uh, you know, finishing the tester and, I, and everything. This is a little um, board that uh, it's just a co common thing. People buy our breakout RTCs for the Raspberry Pi, and I thought, well, you know, I can make a little plug that just makes it super easy to add a real-time clock. There's a little coin battery, and it works quite well and very easy to install. We have a tutorial even and a script for installing. Um, it doesn't. It, it looks like it's in the way of this cable, but actually it isn't. The way I designed it, there's like a cutout. So this cable isn't in the way. Um, so you can use it with your Pi. It works with any Raspberry Pi. In fact, it even works with the um, older Pi 1s because it only connects to the first oh. six pins. And then uh, you have the rest of the pins available if you want to connect to them or, or not. This basically makes it cool. nice and small. Real-time clock, crystal, um, and uh, battery backup. So you just plug it in, and then you run the little script to install the hardware clock support. And that's it. You're done. It you know, basically runs on any Linux computer. It'll probably run on Raspberry Pi clones as well because it's just using the three volt and I squared C connection. But it's just a very easy way to add real time clock if you're doing something where it's not connected to the internet, so it can't get time. Yeah. Uh, you know, or an alarm, or or just something that's standalone, but you want it to keep track of time and date. Uh, this is a very easy, low cost, simple way to do it. it. Comes fully assembled too, so you just plug and play. We fully pick and place the whole thing, so you get it just like this, and you just plug it in. Very very easy to use. Okay. As easy as it gets. All right. And with that, Lady Ada. Easy star. That was uh, new products. New, new, new. Okay. Um, new out. That's right.